In this video, we're going to be doing a head-to-head -head matchup between the Amana S-Series, which is a side discharge heat pump that's classified as a cold climate heat pump, as well as the Daikin Fit Enhanced, which is also a cold climate heat pump. And we're going to be going over efficiency ratings, COP data. We're going to be doing a deep dive into the actual manuals where I show you the actual heating and cooling performance data so we can see if there's actually a difference between these units. Spoiler alert, there is a difference, but I'll tell you what that is as we go through the natural course of things. Some of the Energy Star data in terms of which systems qualify for the heat pump tax credits. Both these systems do qualify, but we're going to show you which tonnages qualify and again, do a deep dive into that heat pump tax credit. And so if you're not familiar or you're just tuning in or starting your heat pump shopping journey for the first time, we put out a lot of content like this on this channel. So if you're tuning in for the first time, please make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for the algorithm. It's a free way you can show support if you found this content helpful. But that being said, let's dive in. So first things first, let's look at what is I discharge heat pump. So so a side discharge heat pump is kind of what it sounds like, where is instead of having, you know, a traditional system like you might be used to seeing outside, which when people think of an air conditioner or a heat pump, they tend to think of these other models, which is just a big box that sits outside. And when they think of mini split or ductless systems, they tend to think of these side discharge systems like the S series. Now, this particular system is actually related to the Daikin Fit. The Daikin Fit is the exact same system, basically identical. There's a few differences between the two units. But as you can see, they're basically identical. Now the Daikin Fit Enhanced came out first and Amana, as well as a few of the other brands have followed suit and come out with uh, similar products. And so if we're going to be going through all these numbers in this performance data that you can see right here. We're actually going to be going uh, through that a little bit later. So I will touch on that. And so you can see the actual difference between these systems and you'll see how they actually stack up in a head-to-head -head matchup. But first off, let's talk about what the benefits are of this system are versus a traditional system. Number one, it's as you can see it's a lot smaller so it's space saving that's why our customers love these particular systems and another reason is that these systems work well in cold climates and they are actually classified as a cold climate heat pump for the requirements of the tax credit now if you're not familiar with the tax credit um, i'll link this in the description for you below this is energystar.gov but basically if you go and search for any of these models you can pick out you can search by brand you can search for a specific model number and you can click on tax credit eligibility and it'll pull up a lot of information on the uh, tax credit credits and what qualify and basically it explains it here but you can claim up to 30 percent of the project cost maximum amount credited of two thousand dollars you have these blue states you know in the north that are cold climate heat pumps is what you need in order to qualify in these regions and then in the orange or you know southern regions where it's warmer and they're more cooling centric or cooling focused uh, these particular systems are that are going to have a different set of requirements or a different set of classifications in order to qualify for that heat pump tax credit. Now that tax credit is in addition to any other rebates, local municipality rebates that might be going on in your area. Right now in Denver, there's a ton of rebates. Also in Phoenix, Arizona, which is another market we service, there is a lot of rebates as well. There's specifically in SRP territory. You get a nice uh, rebate on any inverter product of $225 per ton, and there's no limit on the amount of systems. And a lot of homes out there have two and three systems just because of how hot it is outside. And this is a great product for that. And and we'll explain why and what you want to look at. Basically, when it comes to extreme cold or extreme heat, you don't just want to put in any system because some systems don't keep up. And in fact, Goodman makes a version of this unit. It's also a side discharge system like this, but it actually doesn't keep up as well in those really hot climates or hotter temperatures above 110 or 115 degrees Fahrenheit. It actually derates and loses capacity. So those are the kind of things that you want to look at or your contractor should be aware of when you're looking at some of this data. So let's talk about kind of a broad overview of some of the specifications. So this system is up to 17.2 SEER2. Some of you are, you know, if you're just tuning in now and starting your search, you might not have known that we just kind of started to phase out SEER1 equipment. The difference between SEER1 and SEER2 is that SEER1 was tested at 0.1 inch of water column static pressure, and SEER2 is tested at 0.5 inches of water column total external static pressure. What that means in a nutshell is that SEER2 is a more accurate rating scale, basically real world conditions that we as technicians encounter in the field, because I will tell you, I dream of running into ductwork that has a total external static pressure of 0.1 inches water column. You just don't see it that often because most ductwork, unfortunately, is either undersized or just minimally sized to just barely squeak out enough airflow if it is even properly sized for the home and the system. HSPF2 rating of 8.6, that's a, stands for heating seasonal performance factor. 
and this is what the biggest selling factor is on these side discharge systems, has a decibel rating as low as 45 decibels, and that's in quote unquote quiet mode, which is basically when it's just running at its lower capacities or in that modulating in quiet mode, it's going to be quieter, running 45 to 50 decibels. Now, as far as some of the other things to point out, it says compatible with the Mana brand thermostat, or one of the few differences, honestly, between the Amana product line and the Daikin product line is that system is going to have its own Amana thermostat, which is a communicating thermostat. The reason it's important to have a communicating thermostat with a product like this is an inverter product and what an inverter is when you compare it to a single stage system. A single stage system is either on 100% or it's off. These systems basically ramp up and down along a continuum. And so when it first kicks on, it might be at 10 or 20 or 30% capacity, and then it slowly ramps up. And having that proprietary thermostat is part of how it achieves that efficiency because it's actually communicating with the outdoor unit and the indoor unit, and it tells them to work in unison. So that way, 90 degrees in your house because you were out of town and you just set the thermostat really high, and then you came back in town and cranked it down to 70. Because it knows there's a 20 degree temperature differential between the set point, it's actually going to ramp up to a higher capacity. Now, if you do that with your single stage system, it's not going to make any difference. If it's 90 degrees in the house and you set it at 80 or 70, setting it colder is not going to make any difference. As long as it's set below the set point, it's either on or it's off. But in this particular situation, it makes a difference. And so as it gets closer to that, you know, 70 degree set point or 75, whatever you set it at, it will basically start to land on that temperature softly. And so you get a lot more even temperature distribution in your home. It's one of the most comments that we receive about the benefits of inverters that our customers kind of share with us in terms of feedback. Now, another thing it points out, slim style, small footprint, quiet mode, enhanced acoustical comfort, and a bluefin corrosion coating. Now, the Daikin Fit has a lot of those same things. And let's talk about kind of the differences between the warranties. Now, as you can see here, again, pointing out this is an Energy Star cold climate system, and this has an impressive lifetime unit replacement guarantee. Now, we'll explain what that is in a second, and um, it also has a 10-year parts limited warranty. Now, the difference between this Amana system and that warranty compared to a Daikin warranty is that a Daikin has a 12-year parts and a 12-year compressor guarantee, meaning if the compressor fails in the first 12 years, they'll give you a brand new unit. The only caveat with this lifetime unit guarantee is that that is limited to the person who purchases the home and therefore purchases the equipment. So you can get that lifetime replacement guarantee that's going to be on the outdoor unit, doesn't cover the indoor unit. So if there's changes with the indoor units in the future, then you would have to, you know, cover some of those changes, which will come into play as, you know, refrigerants phase out and change. But the bottom line is this is a lifetime unit guarantee, and that's not a bad warranty. Now, the reason they do that lifetime guarantee is because they know the average American, and this is a fun fact for you if you didn't know this, moves on average every seven years. So that lifetime guarantee is going to be to the original purchaser. It doesn't transfer with the unit. If I'm not mistaken and read the warranty correctly, that's my understanding of that. And the 10-year parts warranty transfers to with the home sale. So if you do sell your home, that warranty will still transfer not a problem. Now, as far as, you know, the Daikin Fit, it has a lot of these same features. Like I said, one of the biggest differences is between this thermostat and the Daikin One Touch. But are there any actual differences in terms of how these systems perform? Well, let's find out. And the way we're going to find out is actually diving into some of this data. Now, this chart might be hard to read because it's sideways. And so I apologize for that. But that's just how these manuals come in PDF format. And so basically looking at this, I know you might be wondering, what does you know, this chart even mean? So the, all these numbers at the top right here, this is outdoor ambient temperature. And what I'm showing you here is how this system performs in high ambient temperature. So at 115 degrees Fahrenheit, which that is a number that we do hit in Phoenix regularly. In this particular example, we're looking at this four ton system, right? This four ton Amana version. This system, you can see it actually derates from about 95 degrees or 85 degrees. It's running around 43,000, 44,000 BTUs, 45,000 BTUs in terms of capacity. It actually derates a little bit down to 38,300 BTUs of capacity. That's this number you have to multiply by a thousand. So this is BTUs per hour. So 38.3 would equate to 38,300 BTUs per hour, which there is one ton per 12,000 BTUs. So that's where this tonnage comes from in terms of this being a four ton version. And that's the actual performance. Now, one thing that's interesting is let's pull up the Daikin fit data. So now as we go over and look at the Daikin data, as you can see on this four ton version, so this is the DZ6 and this is the four ton, you can see that at 115 degrees, same thing, 38,300 BTUs, 37,000 BTUs, 36,400 BTUs at these varying and these different numbers at the top has to do, this number is your indoor dry bulb 
and I believe this is, yeah, entering into our wet bulb temperature. Again, it's hard to read because it's on its side. So this is your entering into our wet bulb. And so wet bulb temperatures between 67 and 59, as you can see, are basically identical. You've got 36.4, 36.4, 37, and 38.3, the warranty. And my point in this is this is something that I bring up a lot in videos because I get a lot of hate sometimes in the comments for this one. I've put out videos that say the truth about brand or and I have the argument that brand doesn't matter or brands are all the same, but there's a caveat to that, right? Both these brands are legit, reputable. They are large companies. They're actually the same company. And the reason that matters is if you look at like Bryant and Carrier, for example, same thing. Those are both the same company. Hain is their inverter or their baseline of product. If you look at Train, that's the same as American Standard. And so that most of the brands out there, most of the manufacturers will have different levels, different products. But when it comes to brand, what you want to look for is that a name brand that you recognize. That way, you know, their warranty means something because now that Amana is part of the same company and as Daikin, Daikin is, you know, one of the largest companies in the world. They have the largest domestic factory in Houston. And on top of that, they've been in business for about 100 years. And so in terms of like them being able to back up a 10 year warranty or a lifetime warranty, you know that that company is going to be around to support that and stand behind their word. So would I put in an Amana system in my home or would I put a Daikin system in my home? Well, we're a Daikin dealer. And so the answer to that would be we would put a Daikin system in our home. But if you had any mana, let's say you had an existing mana furnace and you wanted to add air conditioning. Now, I know if you're in Phoenix, no one's adding air conditioning. Everyone already has it. <laughs> But in Colorado, believe it or not, there's a lot of people that have been muscling through the summers and just waiting till eight o'clock when they can open up their windows at night when it drops down to 75, maybe in the heat of the night of summer. But the bottom line is that a lot of people are adding air conditioning. So if I already had an existing Amana system, I would strongly consider putting in an Amana product because in order to get the true communicating features of a heat pump and an AHRI matchup, which I will talk about in a second, you need to have a paired match communicating system. An AHRI matchup, what that means is when you look at this this product data right here where we're talking about the expanded cooling data and it shows you know this is the, the outdoor unit and this is the indoor air handler component there is a specific series of tests that was done on those specific components so we know that the outdoor unit and the indoor unit have a specific set of efficiency ratings and that's how they're able to qualify for these energy star ratings and that is why it's important to get an ahri matchup because if you mismatch something and there's no ahri you won't qualify qualify for any of the heat pump tax credits. And in addition to those heat pump tax credits, you won't qualify for the rest of those rebates. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about some of the tax credits and this Energy Star site and how you can navigate it to make the most of it. But before we do that, if you've been enjoying this content so far and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. It's a free way you can show support. It is much appreciated. And as you can tell, it takes a lot of time and energy to put out content like this. So this Energy Star site, the best way that you can use this is to find out what rebates are available in your zip code. And so when you're in here navigating through these different products, and you can look for all types of products, not just heat pumps, you know, energy efficient refrigerators, air conditioners, and other products that qualify for rebates that you can check out if they're an Energy Star certified product and what types of rebates are available just by going to the site. But when you look, you know, rebates in your zip code, you're not only going to get the heat pump tax credits, but you'll also get access to some of the local rebates that might be available through your local utility provider like Excel Energy and Call Colorado or SRP, which is one of the rebate providers in Phoenix, Arizona. And so when you look here, you know, I have this sorted by a system type or by brand. So this is all the Daikin heat pumps that qualify for the rebate. And as you can see, it's basically the same set of heat pumps that qualify for the Amana rebate. There's four SEER 2 systems that qualify and have various ratings. And some of them are rated for, you know, cold climate applications like the side discharge series. And some of them are just going to qualify for that tax credit in the cooling climates. And so this is a great resource um, when you come in here. And if you want to, like I said, search for specific rebates, you can see all these rebates. This is the Excel energy rebate that shows up in our area. So when you just expand this rebate drop down here, it's going to give you a lot more information about what's available. And one more thing I want to show you that is a very handy feature is if you click on this hyperlinked tax credit eligibility on any of the products you're searching, and you can find any brand 
in this website. When you come down here and scroll through, it's going to have all you know the requirements for these, like we touched on earlier. And then down here, there's this little button where it says Explore Models. And if you click that, this takes you to a separate Energy Star site where you can actually search for all the individual air handlers and matchups. And it will tell you if it's tax credit eligible in the north and or in the south. And some will be both. Some will be only the north. And the northern states are all identified on the map here in blue. And so this is, you know, Utah, Colorado, Kansas, all the states where it's required to have a cold climate Energy Star rating. Those are going to be those states. And that's just a really good resource. And again, that's right here where it says explore models and you can search for yourself. And just keep in mind that you don't have to do all this legwork. This is just if you're curious and you're the type where you want to do a deep dive and double check things. The bottom line is your contractor should know, you know, which systems qualify. If they don't, or if you want to double check, you can use this as a resource just to double check and make sure what systems are going to qualify for the heat pump tax credits as well as other rebates available in your specific area. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service like Denver, Colorado or Phoenix, Arizona, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free. We come out for free for all first time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's actually a link in the description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up to date list of the cities and states that we service. So you can stay up to date when we start servicing your Metro. And right now there's a few videos popping up on the screen that YouTube thinks you should watch, as well as a few other videos about heat pumps and heat pumps efficiency ratings that are very helpful during the, the process that you're going through if you're in the market for a new system. So check those out if you haven't done so already, and we will catch you on the next episode.